What's up everybody, Volin here in Pursuit of Art. I got a question this week that I think will be useful to a lot of people because it comes with a certain attitude. It comes with a certain set of preconceptions and ideas about how things should go, what you should be able to do just in general, not just how good you should be at something, right? Anything that you just pick up, you expect that you're going to be awesome at it or that you should be at a certain level. And if you're not, then it's really not worth doing. So it's a, a certain type of attitude that comes with it, just an expectation. And also from some of the previous comments I got, I can sort of see this relationship to struggle that a lot of people have, that they think if they're struggling with something, then that's not how it's supposed to go. And they just sort of avoid anything that puts them in a place where they have to like really be frustrated and sort of break through a barrier that they have. I think a lot of people let's think that that's a bad thing. So this question is hopefully going to help a lot of people that have been trying to do things, have been unsuccessful for some time, and have developed a lot of different frustrations associated with it. Also, they don't want to get to work. They're sort of procrastinating because it's just painful to get to. Anytime that you want to start, your expectations aren't met, and you just feel like this anger, this anxiety, this intense frustration of why is it not working? This is so simple. This I've seen other people. It's so easy. Why is it? And they just avoid doing it because of that struggle that happens each and every time. And I think it's the perception of the struggle really that makes it hurt as much as it does. All right. So this is the question. So I've been drawing on and off for a long time. I'm okay with certain aspects of art, but I'm nowhere near the high-end level I'd like to be at. I get so frustrated, it's driving me insane. Okay, so we got two points so far. I've been drawing on and off for a long time, and it gets me very frustrated because my expectations aren't being met. I think I should be better than I am. Or when I do stuff, it's really, really difficult, and I think it should come easier to me, okay? As a teenager, I wanted to be a comic book artist. Over 15 years later, I still struggle to reach a standard I'm happy with, and it would be very unlikely a comic studio would hire me today based on my portfolio. I can create okay art, but even then it will require a huge time frame to complete in order to make up for my lack of skill. So I have to spend 80 hours on work, which is less accomplished than 8 or 9 hour works I see by other artists. Okay, so breaking that down, I've been doing it for a very long time, so I expect that by now I should be good at it. So this is almost the time frame for some people is almost like if I've been doing it for long enough, then I should be this or I should be that. I can create okay art, but I need loads of time. One thing I have to ask about that is how do you know how long it actually takes them? And if you've seen, let's say, a demo or something, then do you know about all the things that they're using on the side that they're not saying? And again, you just get, you're going to get faster as you do stuff. But let's continue on. I want to improve my speed without sacrificing quality and level up as quickly as possible. Everyone wants to, I've never had a question that someone says, how do I go slower, dude? I'm just too good too quickly. What would you suggest I do to achieve this? Over the years, I've developed an association between creating art and stress. That's what we talked about in the intro, is that people just have so many expectations about how something should go. They just create these emotional anchors or like emotional spirals that one thing just your brain pretty much works on a pattern basis. So your brain remembers the sequence of things. So if you first get angry, then you get bored and then this always precedes drawing or you just start drawing and then immediately you get frustrated and bored. Your brain is just going to lump those together in a way. So then it's much easier for you to get frustrated and bored when you're next doing it. So those emotional anchors are self-made. So we all have those, we all make them. We make them unconsciously though, because we don't understand how that works. And we just feel a certain way. We assume that we feel a certain way because of the things that we do. But in fact, a lot of it is just thinking and how you perceive stuff. Also your character, meaning all of that stuff is just put together. That it's almost like either the fuel or the rope around your neck that just stops you from doing anything. So I'm going to talk about that in the video, of course. Um, so I've created a lot of different associations, a lot of boredom and frustration, and all of that is around the art 
process. I suspect I need to approach art creation and practice in a different way, but I don't know what exactly would yield best results, and I don't know how to recondition my mind to feel enthusiastic about drawing and so enable art to become a daily or more active part of life. All right, so let's sort of sum up the question. So we're going to generalize, we're going to take what we just read and we're going to put that into a broader category so that everyone can get something from it. And also, we all think that we have just specific problems. We all think that, oh, I have this thing and if only I solve this, then everything else is going to be fine. We, we think like that, that we have a specific thing that we need to solve and then everything is going to get fixed. But really, mostly what I think happens is that we have a general outlook. We're generally like something. We're generally have a certain attitude. And then we just find different areas that we can express that in. So it's not really the thing that's the problem. It's how you approach the thing. And it's also, it's just you're looking for an avenue to manifest all that negative stuff that you've been holding on to. And it's not, it's not art. If it wasn't art, it would have been... It would have been something else, it would have been music, it would have been martial arts, it would have been anything new that you picked up that you wanted to excel at, you would have probably projected that. It would, it would have found an expression of all that stuff that was there already. And to me, that's the core problem, is changing how you think about things and how you view struggle, how you view what you need to go through. Once you get that result, if you actually enjoy having difficulty, if you enjoy having to go through a struggle, then really anytime you struggle with something it's not going to be that intense frustration painful feeling that you get it will be a different way that you approach it it will be something that you can improve in so in a in a way it would have been a good thing so i'm going to just quickly cover what we're going to talk about so a lot of people bring a lot of baggage frustration and unrealistic expectations and self-image and self-worth are pretty much tied into the end result so if you don't get a good result if you don't get a return to what you put in or if it doesn't go the way you'd like it to go then a lot of people tie that in with their self-image and self-worth and say like oh i'm no good at this or i just suck or maybe i'm just i, I i'm just gonna stay at the bottom of a barrel and i've met people that have sort of resign themselves before they've even tried they just sort of well i guess i'm just not going to be good at anything and that's fine and they just have decided they've just no one there's there's no reason why they can't they've just decided that they're not even going to try because of that it's a false association but a lot of people have that especially in art i don't really understand why that is but a lot of people when they're doing what we do is they just put way too much expectation and way too much, um, they care about the result way too much. And it's just unrealistic that nothing's going to break you faster than wanting something to always be awesome. It's like having a slot machine mentality of like with art, especially because you don't really know how most of the pieces are going to turn out. You, you're going to have some element of surprise. And if you always assume that the first one should be the best one because you don't want to go through a struggle, then really almost every time the slot machine isn't going to give you what you're expecting because the first one isn't always the best one. You have to go through different options. And if you don't like struggling, you don't like the options because each option is a struggle. Moving on. Comparing to others. So this is the 80 hour versus the 8, 9 hours of other people. So we all compare. We all have self-image issues tied in with getting good results because we can only be good if we get good results. And using art or using any, anything that you do as a vehicle to explore your own limitations, to get better. When you're frustrated, that's actually an opportunity to get better. That's the time when you can grow. It's also the time when you can stop yourself from going and say, no, you shouldn't try things that you are bad at because you will be laughed at or you will prove to yourself that you are not awesome. Okay. And there's also a few other things in there such as I've been doing it for a very long time, I should be awesome by now, or I've been doing it for so long that I take this as evidence that I'll never be awesome at this. And it's almost, again, another justification of why you won't be good. So a lot of different things in there. And I think a lot of people are thinking in a very similar way. So this is gonna be more about shifting how you view things and shifting how you view struggle rather than I'm just not gonna get I just I guess it's just not meant to be it's it's my my life's dream is this thing but I guess I am just not the one who will live it 
I guess I should just return to the farm and live in my parents' basement like grandmother said I would if I don't listen to her and I shouldn't try any of these things that I would like to do. I should just do like grandma does because then she will like me and I'll be approved. All right, so let's have a look through this humongous slide and just explore a few of the things that to me are the answer or the retaliation to that same destructive attitude that prevents you from doing what it is that you want to get done. One thing, first thing, is it's not about you, it's about your brain. So a lot of people bring their baggage, their frustration, their I will never be good, I will never be able to do this, their all the unrealistic expectations. And it's really not about you. It's not about you as a person. It's not that you can't do it. It's if you fail, it's also not about you failing. It, none of that is evidence of anything because it's not about you. It's about your brain. Okay. Those are sort of two separate things. Your brain in a way is like an organic machine that you program through your thoughts. This is really simplified, but because it has an automatic component, it'll just do what you normally do. So it's not about you. It's not about you, the conscious control of I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's not about you. It's about your brain meaning that a huge component of your success is actually about those automated thoughts, about those automated scripts that your brain runs through. So in essence, it's not about you as a person. It's about how your thoughts, how your conscious thoughts that you are responsible for are affecting the automatic unconscious programs that your brain runs because as soon as you manage to implement new thoughts and new attitudes, your automatic parts of your brain start changing. So it's a pretty weird relationship in between the conscious and the unconscious. And it's the unconscious really that stores most of the information, most of the skill. So the conscious part, the one that you're responsible for, now that's the you part. So when you start making better decisions and you start being more conscious about how you're affecting the skill unconscious part of the brain, then you can start and you can be more deliberate with what you put in and what it will remember and what it will do for you. So if you treat it well, if you're good to it, nice to it, and you use it skillfully, then it's going to give you back what you want to get. That's the first one. Okay. We're going to go over these really quickly. Then we're going to go a bit in depth. Time does not guarantee success. Quality does. Again, like I said before, a lot of people think that just because they've been doing something for a very long time, that means that they should be good at it by now, or it means that, well, I guess I just won't be able to do that thing. It's like a cop out in a way, like I've been doing it for 15 years. Surely you will understand that I must be good by now, sir. But the thing is that it does not guarantee success. I mean, I could just sit in my chair here with a book open and 15 years later, I might not have read the first page. So it's not time that guarantees success, it's quality. Train for the sake of training. Don't care about the outcome. If you go to the gym or if you go running or whatever it is you do, you don't expect your bicep to be immediately bigger when you're done, or you don't expect your legs to be bigger or smaller, depending on what is it you're doing right away. I mean, that would be nice. That's just not how it works. And you have a realistic expectation and you just go most of the time, at least for myself, when I go training, I go for the sake of training. I'm not expecting to get anything back from it. I mean, I do, I know I do, but when I go to train, I just go to train. I don't care that next time I might be a little bit stronger, a little bit this or that. That's nice, but that's not why I go. I just go for the sake of training. It's because I go train through training. I train discipline. I train other things. And when you go and do it, it just feels good So train for the sake of training, then consistency. Those are, those are sort of under the hood, like we talk about normally, what's under the hood. And then we have over here, what are then sort of the, what are the practical expressions for those things? So consistency is key and is number one. It's actually those, all three are going to be number one, but consistency is the key. Consistency is the first and main component. You say that you've been drawing on and off for 15 years. I've been training on and off for 14 years, just doing physical training. I'll talk about that later. 
But consistency, I've been inconsistent. I stopped after my first two or three years for a whole year. And then I did other stuff. I changed, I changed over. If I'd just done one thing, I would have been awesome. And if I'd done it consistently. But I changed, I changed often. So I'm inconsistent. So my results are inconsistent. And also I don't get to build continuously over just one thing. I'm building many different things. And then if you don't push them all high enough, you don't even get to get them off the ground. So consistency is number one. Anything that you want to get good at, you need to consistently, purposefully do over a very long period of time. Then knowledge. Are you, are you doing the right thing? Because a lot of people, we get stuck in tutorials, in books, in information because knowledge with it carries the illusion of, oh, I know this now. Now that I read about this thing, I know, I know it. I know everything there is to know. I, I, I own it, right? A lot of time, knowledge gives us the illusion of power. It gives us the illusion that we know how to do stuff. But at the same time, if you don't have it, if you don't have enough of it, so it's a problem at this age because we have so much of it. But it's actually one of the most useful things ever also. So it's like, as everything, everything's a double-edged sword. This is a double-edged sword too. So are you doing the right thing? And do you know what the sequence is of, I'm going to learn this and then this is going to unlock that. And I can't study this before I study all this stuff. A lot of times people just jump into the deep end. Like I said, they just go to the biggest thing they want and then just miss out on everything before that. Do you know what follows what? Do you know how it's done? Do you know how other people do it? Do you know what they use that they're not showing you? So if you're watching a tutorial, if you're watching someone draw or paint, do you know if they have reference open that you're just not seeing? Do you know if they're using 3D? Do you know if they reuse thumbnails? Do, do you know how they do it? Do you know the stuff that they're not showing you? I was watching a Fang Zhu tutorial recently. And now that I'm better, like I notice more stuff. And I used to watch it before. Like it's this almost insanely magical thing. Like, oh, this guy just puts stuff randomly. And then all of a sudden, just like this stuff appears. And then I just noticed that he jumped from one thing to another thing. And like his painting was like textured and it was he had basically just missed the step, which for pros would be fine. That yeah, just I, I know what happened there. But for like someone that doesn't know, it's like oh, what was what was this slate of hand trick that you pulled on me, Feng Zhu? And you have no idea what happened. And maybe they do it, so you need to go to the school. Maybe they just keep pieces of information, so like that's understandable. That's how they wouldn't exist if people if they just gave everything away and people could just do everything it, it could be that or it could be that they just wanted to shorten the video whatever it is do you know when something's missing do you know when a piece of the puzzle is missing are you using all your tools all of that stuff and the final one your why emotional control and your relationship to pain i made a video before about long-term motivation i suggest you have a look at that it's just about finding out your why. Why do you do what you do? And the rest, like we talked about, the emotional anchors that you've developed, the frustration and boredom that goes along with consistent failure and expectations, all of that stuff. There's a saying that I really like. It says, to the common man, everything is either a blessing or a curse. To the warrior, everything is a challenge. You don't need to be a warrior, but what you do need to, to just realize is that everything that happens to you has in it the seed, the potential of your own improvement. And it could either be that like, yes, this thing is difficult. And if I go through it, I will be better. Or you could take it as everything is difficult. And if I try it, I might just fail and I'll suck. Really what makes the difference is how you view it. So let's get and have a look at these now more in depth. All right, so let's do a second pass on these. Go a bit more in detail and figure out how we can put them all together and make them useful, turn them into something that we can actually use to get better. So the first one really is the key, the main one for me, because once you sort of wrap your head around it, once you realize that it's not about you, it's about your brain, and you start reading more and understanding more about how your brain works, and I recommend checking out the blogs. I've written quite a few different posts about this stuff. Uh, the key to get better is one of the blog posts. That's not exactly the title, but I'm sure you'd be able to find it. So what I mean is that anyone that you admire that has a certain skill set, they can do something that you can't do yet, they're human, right? They have the same biology you do. 
98% of them, let's say it's exactly the same as you. They just have found a way to develop their potential and focus it and do something that now seems extraordinary. So you, in the same way, you have the same potential they do, right? All of us as humans, we pretty much have the same potential. Potential isn't really special. Everyone has it. And that's really good to understand is that it doesn't take someone special to be able to do something special. All it takes is a series of small steps that each one takes you closer and closer to where you need to get to. Why that works is because your brain is plastic. Your brain can change. Now, people used to think before that after a certain age, everything is pretty much clustered and done and it's just it it is the way it is dude sorry if you want to learn something we don't really know how it works it's just i don't know just somehow gets in there it's a little beaker what it is is that your brain is actually plastic and it changes all the time like daily your brain changes all the time new networks form and old networks get pruned and forgotten and understanding how malleable this whole process is can really help you understand how you can work with that potential and transform it into something useful. Now, the flip side of that is that you say that you've developed a lot of frustrations, a lot of anxieties, a lot of bad qualities. That also comes from the brain being plastic. Basically, the brain works in patterns. You do one thing and then you do a few other things and if they normally come as a sequence, then your brain will start mapping. Well, if I do the first thing, I'm, I'm going to have to go through second, third, fourth and get to the fifth thing. Like it sort of learns that sequence and it, it makes the second, third and fourth thing easier. Like they follow one from the other. So your brain is really good at getting into patterns. So you can use that in two ways. One, you can make routines to get better. The other one is you can foster bad thoughts or go into those negative spirals of, oh, I really hate doing this, I suck so much at it, I hope this doesn't happen, etc., etc. So then before you even start, your brain is like, okay, we're gonna draw, that means failure, lower dopamine, get rid of serot, we're gonna just really suck, just increase depression, decrease excitement, which decreases your attention span, which then decreases your the plasticity of the brain, because actually for your brain to be plastic, the more excited you are, the easier you form memories, it's also you can stay concentrated for longer times, whereas if you get depressed and bored, you sort of disassociate and you can't possibly form those networks that you need. Without getting into too much detail and not that I'm in any way educated in any other stuff, it's just that I've read a lot because to me that's just really useful. So beginning to think about how you're separate from your brain, how you actually have the capability to guide what you get to learn and you're not just at the mercy of oh I feel like this or I feel like that knowing that you can actually change it actively then helps you being able to make conscious decisions of I want more of this in my life and I want less of that the way I think of it is that your brain is almost like a little kid your brain needs things explained over and over and in a very slow simplistic manner I've talked before about how it's almost like a delusion when you see something and you think you get it but if you explain it to a little kid and you ask it to give it back, which in that case would be watch a tutorial, see if you can do what they just covered, then you'd realize, dude, that seems so simple, but I can't do 80% of it. So your brain is a little kid. You're gonna have to walk it through every single step slowly over and over. But the thing is though, you can't be frustrated at a little kid, right? You wouldn't be like, yeah, you're so stupid. Just do basic math. You need to show it over and over. Okay, one plus one is what? One plus two is what? You need to take it by the hand and guide it through that whole process over and over, as many, ty as many times as it takes. Paradoxically, to get better faster, which is one of the other things you ask, is to go slow. Go very slow, iron out the kinks. To get faster, you need to slow down. Take what it is you're struggling with deconstruct it into parts and begin practicing each and every single part over and over. Check out my studies video. Slow down. The more you slow down, the more you explain in the most ridiculous terms that are the most obvious ones, the over and over. When you do that, your brain's going to pick it up. It's going to become automatic and you'll never have to repeat it again. So you slow down, you do it over and over and over. You build the pattern of that. Your brain gets it. It gets offloaded into your 
more primitive areas of the brain, your basal ganglia, it just gets stored there and it's like a script now. It's this app that you've built for your brain that will execute flawlessly each and every time. That's why it's not about you, it's about your brain. Learn to build your brain. Get some books on it, have a look, take a look at my blog, take a look at some of the other posts. I've talked a lot about it and I've written more about it than I've talked in these videos. So have a look. It's To me, that's where to start. Immediately, very closely re related to that is the second one. Time does not guarantee success, quality does. Why? Because if you're going too fast, if you're not explaining well to the little kid and you just, come on, dude, come on, just get it faster. Come on, I need to go to, come on, dude. Can you imagine having like a five-year-old and just they're writing in their little notebook and they're barely doing like ugly little scribbles and you're like, come on, come on, just do math faster. We need to get going. They're never going to finish. So time doesn't guarantee, well, doesn't guarantee success. It doesn't matter how long you've spent. If you're not doing it with attention to detail and you're not doing it with the, all the separate components, thinking, analyzing, if you're doing the right thing, you should also have this rational paranoia of always thinking, am I doing the right thing or am I doing the wrong thing? Sometimes if you've stuck with something for a very long time, then you shouldn't stick with it. You should actually change the strategy of how you approach it. It might be a different way that'll get you there. So it's not sticking with it to guarantee success. It's finding out how to actually get there and it's being very active and sometimes changing direction and just trying different ways. So you're staying on focus. It's on point still with where you want to get to, which is let's say improve in art or get better at whatever, because this translates into any area of your life. You're not just rigidly sticking with it and repeating over and over and over and over the same thing, because I do get how you can get bored like that. You need to vary your routine. You need to vary what you do. You need to vary your methods, your tools, etc. Like there's so many things that you could do to make it exciting. It doesn't need to be boring. Just because you went to school maybe and all the teachers were boring and everything they taught was boring. They were just bad teachers, dude. You can do this better. Like it's in your hands now. You can do it so it's exciting. Do it so you can't wait to get started. Do all kinds of stuff that will help you stay on track. Start small. Small successes build your dopamine. Just have like five minutes of this. I'm just gonna do 10 minutes of figure drawing. I'm just gonna do 20 minutes of a color study. I'm just gonna do 10 minutes of cars. I'm gonna do five minutes of freehand sketching. They're gonna build, small successes are gonna build dopamine. They're just gonna give you more dopamine, meaning it's gonna make you happier. It's gonna make it easier for you to concentrate. You're gonna have those happy feelings rather than, you're gonna be more excited rather than just being like, oh, because I used to give myself these tasks of, okay, I need to do an hour of this, an hour of that, two hours of this, one hour of that. I also have to go to work, I have to come back, I have to do more hours of stuff. It just becomes unfun after a certain point. Now I have like 30 minute to 45 minute different things that I have to do. I also like lists for some reason. I like being able to tick something off. So I'll have like a big list and I'll just click all of it or I'll just cross it out. It just makes me happy. So when I start my morning and I have like three, four or five things that I can do in about 30 minutes and I can cross all of them off immediately, I have a page, but I already have four that I've knocked out and it might be stupid and ridiculous, but to my brain, it's like, yeah, man, we're doing it. Makes me happy. So I do it. I don't even try to think about it. It just works. Begin to build and anticipate small successes. Again, with the five, 10, 20 minute thing, just begin instead of having that anxiety and just like, dude, I can't possibly do another one. Instead of that, just have a small thing that you need to, to complete. And the whole point is that you need to complete the task. It's not what you get from it. It's not that I need to finish with the most perfect study or I'm the worst loser. That's not it. It's, I just need to do this task. And like, yes, I did the task. That's all. We don't care how you did. You could have been terrible but then you have tomorrow and you're just gonna do the task again and again and again and again. And this ties into consistency, it ties into the train for the sake of training. It doesn't matter what comes out. What matters is that you did it because that's how you improve. Train for the sake of training. Pretty much what I just talked about, breezing through the video now to keep it under an hour. No goal, no outcome. It doesn't matter what you get in the end. What, matter is, what matters is that you just keep executing the task. Just keep doing the task. My advice when you're making a list of what you need to do is just have those things that if you want, if you want to be improving in whatever areas you're doing. So let's say some figure drawing, some color, some accuracy, just whatever it is that your particular interest is in, 
find tasks that are going to be conducive to that. So if it's, if it's just doing portraits, then accuracy, color, some anatomy, etc. And just have something that you're doing every day that is part of those. So for accuracy, you could just be doing like a sorrow heads or you could just be trying to find points and just reproduce them accurately. That's going to build your accuracy. Just get some color studies and just try and pick colors accurately, etc. Just have a task each and every day that gets you closer. You don't need to be evaluating each and every day. Why am I doing this? What is the purpose of my life? All you have to do is you just have to have that list and just execute the tasks. You don't even need to remember why. Your brain is going to take care of that. Your brain doesn't care why, it just cares about forming those patterns. So figure it out once and for all, write it down somewhere because you're going to forget and just keep going through the list. Consistency, exactly what I just talked about. Decide what and why once, then just do it over and over and over and over each and every day. If you have 10 minutes, do it for the 10 minutes. If you have 10 hours, do it for four hours. Don't do the whole 10 hours because then you're going to put yourself off. This needs to be sustainable. It's a long walk. It's not a run. It's a, it's a walk. Okay. It's the small things that matter. Execute. Repetition deepens the impression. That's it. Just do it over and over and over. The knowledge. Knowledge. There's pretty much not much left for me to say. It's just the information. Do you have the information you need? If you don't, do you know where to get it from? If you're looking at someone else, are you sure that you know everything that they're doing? If you look at something that I do now versus what I've been doing last year, you might think that I've either improved in an insane amount or I might just be using tools that I've not been able to use last year. I'm doing a lot of 3D, I'm doing sculpting, I'm rendering in all kinds of different software and stuff. I might have not improved almost at all. It's just my tools are now different and I can use them in a different way and recombine them and the quality of my work overall increases and then I can still work on the small stuff. So do you know what the people are actually doing that you're looking at? Do you know if they have reference? Do you know what their tools are like? Do you know how they, how they approach stuff? Like sometimes I used to think that if you want to draw or paint from imagination that you have to just have everything come out of you spontaneously in some way that it's going to take probably 50, 60 years to train. But then when I actually started finding out how people use reference and what it's for and how to actually use it, how to not just copy, but to put things together, analyze all of that stuff, my work changed immediately. I started spending more time on each individual piece. Everything got better because I got more knowledge. I got the right information and I also started changing the way I approach my problem. So I didn't just hammer it out. I didn't just do it over and over in the old way that I used to do it. I found new information, reevaluate it, keep going. Final one. And we already covered this as well, pretty much. Your why, why, why are you doing what you're doing? Where do you need to get to? Emotional control, which again, it's those patterns that I talked about at the beginning. It's what is it? You need to always be thinking that whatever it is that you think might become a pattern. If you're having negative, depressive, I'll never get better, comparing jealous thoughts, if you're having that and you're having those repeatedly, then you're reinforcing having those more. I suggest with each and every thought that you get, you sort of think, is this something that I want to have in my life repeatedly over and over? Is this helping me? And if you don't, then begin noticing when those arise and begin replacing them. So you get a negative thought, you replace it. When I do studies, regardless of whether they suck or if they turn out good. I don't care. But what I do is I think to myself each and every time, this is making me better. I started doing yoga recently because my legs got really stiff from sitting down for two years for like 16 hour days. So I can barely bend my legs. So I started doing yoga and it really hurts. Like all of it hurts and I sweat and I can't bend and it just sucks. Like it's a miserable time, but I do it every day. And when I do it, I always think like, this is making me better. I can't wait to do it tomorrow. Like I can't wait to actually wake up tomorrow to do it again. Not because I like it. It's because it's, it's making me better. And that makes me like it. So it's that whole point, that relationship to pain that most people form. People try to avoid pain and they just want to get to where they want to get to. But the thing is though, is that pain makes you better. I just read a quote somewhere and I can't remember it accurately, but it said that people bitch and moan about all the rough little spots that cut their legs as they walk along the path, all the different little rocks. But the thing is that later on, as they mature, they realize that those rocks are actually diamonds. Now they might be cheesy, but what it means is that you might really feel that whatever it is that you're going through right now is the worst and no one has ever had it before. 
But the reward for all this stuff isn't just making pretty pictures. I don't care about pictures, but I, I like communicating to people and I like being able to make people better. And if I didn't go through everything that I went through, not knowing what I'm going to do, not knowing how, how I'm going to get there, living in a foreign country, not having any money, working some random job just because that's all I could do. And I started off as I was a janitor, like I was just cleaning toilets and stuff while I was at university. And then my degree was completely useless. So I got out, zero ability to do anything, foreign country, no safety net. And then I'm going to start and I'm going to change careers completely. And I'm going to teach myself too. Now, what are the odds that that's going to work out? But if it does work out, how many people can I help? So it's not what you do so much. It's not what you get in the end, but you become a different person. So you at this time with your current mindset might not see yourself as ever capable of being successful. But through that process of just grinding out and removing all those layers of crap that we accumulate, you change the person you are. And in the end, when you get there, that person that's there, they deserve what they get and they will have better things. Keep working, keep thinking about what you're doing, evaluate, don't just watch what other people do, take everything that's useful and discard everything that's not. And that's really what it takes to get better. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys soon. Let me know if these help you. Give me a like, subscribe, share with everyone, and let me know if I suck.